Ten years ago, Destructive Creations was founded by our CEO, Jaroslav Zielinski. I was asked to say something about him, so here it goes. He makes games and is a person, sometimes. We've grown from a small team to a small team with extra people. Managing big teams in video games sucks, so we'll stay this way. Millions of gamers worldwide know at least some of our games, but it's our anniversary video, so I'm still gonna go through them now with some extra trivia. Hatred. The studio was founded with a clear goal to make and release Hatred within a year, and we achieved that, with something like 8 or 10 people. A feed we've been trying to replicate ever since. Hatred went through a standard Hollywood movie arc, being the most voted Steam Greenlight game, just to be removed from Steam days later, then saved by the god among men, Gaben himself. We still have the personal email from him. While the media at that time didn't like our game much, Hatred has still gathered a large dedicated community respecting it for what it is, one of the games of all time. Even the police in Canada ask us to use it in their anti-terrorist training program. ISD fans. Shaking off the sudden hate and glory, we started preparing for our next major project. In the meantime, a small game was born. A bastard conceived in a dark corridor of a game jam we never attended. You're an orphan from a basket in the middle of the desert. Not as famous as its older brother, but just as much fun. Ancestor's Legacy. And here we are at the title that brought all the boys to the yard, if you will. A full double-A title with 40 plus hours of pure RTS fun and with multiplayer. We've traveled the world with Ancestors Legacy, cross-promoted it with the Vikings TV series, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and the game Skiart ended up on official merch of Amon the Amart. Blood was spilled, DLCs were released for free, except for the expansion. We're quite proud of this one. Daymare 1998. And here comes the next chapter in DC history, where we decided to also publish games from other developers. We figured the industry could use more decent publishers that don't want to bleed developers dry, you know? It started with an Italian export, Daymare 1998, which was originally supposed to be a Resident Evil 2 fan remake, but turned out into its own game after Capcom revealed its own remake plans. But Daymare still bears many similarities with the original title, one of them being Paul Haddad, the voice of the original Leon Kennedy. Space Raiders in space! Well, you know right from the title that this ain't no ordinary game. Oh no. We've done some strange shit, but Space Raiders in space is just another level. Yo, no. come on, move this! Shake that body. But what could we expect from a studio that named themselves Two Stupid Devs? One from Greece, the other from the USA, and they never, to this day, have ever met in person. We have doubts that the latter of them actually exists. But it's by far the funniest game in DC's portfolio, with tons of stupid jokes, hilarious dialogues, and several endings one wouldn't categorize as smart. But it's the gameplay that makes this game awesome. Try it. You'll get sucked in it for the whole day. War Mongrels. With Vikings behind us and our studio being situated just a few kilometers away from the Gliwice radio tower where World War II had allegedly started, the topic and genre of our next game was easily decided. We've had many personal stories from the families of the people on our team and many of them made it into the game, like the one about the soldiers who escaped the Eastern Front. We had a bit of a rough start with War Mongrels, both on the technical side and media-wise, including getting our game reveal event cancelled, but things have calmed down. We've patched the game up and it's been creeping into the hearts of real-time tactics game fans. It's been also praised by historians for representing the rather unpopular part of World War II history through a new modern medium. Shame Legacy Shame Legacy is a game on a computer it works uh, pretty well, actually. To be completely honest, the best way to describe it is not great, not terrible. If you like horror games, check it out to support the Fairyship Games team that made it. You may actually like it.
63 Days is the better brother of Warmongers, an RTT that takes all the good gameplay stuff, adds more heart and eases up on the history part. It's a universal story of people fighting for freedom and independence and for their lives. We've made it more accessible to newcomers while keeping it attractive to RTT veterans through difficulty settings. But why talk about it when you can try the demo? Just go to Steam and look up 63 Days. Hi, I'm Nick, one of the two stupid devs creating Bloodpunk, a physics-based torture simulator which the voices in my head forced me to make. We should have feared. Man is no one's wolf now. Those that survive are just meat. We are hunted by vampires of every kind. We exist merely to satisfy their desires. For more than 40 years, this has been the new world order. But now, dawn shines. Huh. What would you expect from a game someone named Smells Like a Mushroom? I mean, look at it. If a fast-paced platformer shooter full of boomer jokes, weird characters and vegetable puns is what comes to your mind, then you won't believe how much fun you're in for. Where there's water, there's moisture. Where there's moisture, there's mushrooms. Where there's mushrooms, we have work to do. Where there's work... Oh, shut up, Siesta. Neptune is a planet shrouded in legend. Working on this one has been like continuous meme browsing. So peace wait and keep your eyes peeled for the trailer and demo coming in a few days. It's going to be amazing. A big thank you goes to our incredible team. Last but not least, I want to thank me. <laughs> People who play our games and everyone who has been part of this amazing journey. We hope to stick around longer to annoy certain journalists, you know who you are, and make cool games and enough money for Vodka Fridays. Stay tuned, because our best game is still in front of us. We plan to conquer every single platform, including OnlyFans.